Hello, it's Corbett Harrison. Welcome to our home office here at the Harrison household where we come to do our writing. If we need some quiet time and a quiet place, it's nice to have that in your own space. Uh, I hope you have a quiet place to write if you happen to write as much as we do. Uh, hey, very proud to say that my 2017 writer's notebook, we are almost done with 2017, and I am almost done with my 2017 writer's notebook. I hope if you kept a notebook this year that it holds as many cherished and humorous memories as mine does for myself. Uh, and if it's not 2017, remember 2018? great time to start a writer's notebook too as well or 2019 or 2020 whatever year it happens to be why do we talk about writer's notebooks because that's what we talk about at our website the uh, always write website 10 minutes a day in your writer's notebook that's all i ask of my students to get them to build their own creativity skills to get them to build their own ideas of ways to present information and uh, that's what our website is focused on today i'm going to share with you one of my notebook new notebook lessons uh, it's called notebook tribute pages and the easiest way to find it i put this lesson out in december of 2017 easiest way to find it is that green menu bar over on the left hand side look for where it says free lessons from our lesson of the month uh, if you click there you'll get the entire archive but look for december 2017 and everything i'm going to talk about is accessible at that particular lesson so online and ready for you to use if you happen and to be interested. Tribute pages. In my own writer's notebooks, I was flipping back through them just looking for pages where I'd done it um, without my new format being in my mind. And they just kind of come naturally to writer's notebooks. Um, I, they're, they're about people a lot, this one. My stepmother passed away back in August and I was bummed out because I had a trip planned to go see her five weeks after her passing um, before she passed. And uh, I missed seeing her one more time by five weeks and that bothered me, but I decided in my tribute page, I wouldn't focus on that. I needed to focus on however many positive memories I could get down on a list. And I ended up finding room for eight, but uh, I have that tribute page, but that's a tribute page. This is another tribute page. Um, this one's to a place, a person. Now here's a place. Uh, Alcatraz is a field trip I used to love to go on with my eighth graders when we did that. Uh, you wear the audio tour and the security guard marches you around and makes you stop and look at things. Uh, and I always thought that was kind of a fun way to be guided around. So I made a tribute page to Alcatraz done in that security guard's voice. Person, place, and thing. I do not consider my animals to be things. They are children in our home uh, and pudge was certainly not a thing but pets do kind of count under person place thing uh, they kind of count under the thing category uh, here's a tribute to my dog pudge i was trying to come up with 17 ideas what he might list on his resume if he was applying for oh i don't know a babysitting job and these were his skills and his uh his past experience in little jobs if you will and uh five years after he's passed away now i gotta tell you this is one of my favorite pages in one of my notebooks just to go back and look at because it's full of good memories each one of those 17 things could become a story at any time in my life if anyone asked or if i felt like writing about it and i have it stored in my notebook that is the purpose of a notebook well these are tribute pages persons places things that i admire that i respect that i want to be more like these are that's the idea of a tribute page uh, i recently went to st louis in missouri and uh, i decided to create a tribute page while i was there and do it in a different manner and uh, I decided to do it about the St. Louis Arch. So here you are seeing my two page spread. I had so much to say I needed two pages. Um, but what you're maybe not seeing that I've done here is I've actually divided my page into three parts. Um, the page is actually set up to look like a compass going north, south, east, and west, and what you would see if you looked out the arch in certain directions based on my own iPhone photos. But there are actually hidden among that compass three distinct sections. And in each of those sections, um, you'll notice that uh, one of them starts with the letter T, one of them starts with the letter R, one of them starts with the letter I. Those are imperative to think about as I planned what I was going to write in the sections. And that's simply based on the idea that the first three letters of tribute are T, R, I, and that happens to be uh, the uh, 
the, the, the Greek root for three. Now I'm going to zoom in right now and say something very important to you. So please listen. I do know etymology very well, and I am quite aware that the word tribute does not come from the Greek root for three. It comes from a Latin root, the same root that we got the word tribe from. Um, but the convenience of those three letters there together just were a little too much for me to not take advantage of. So I apologize on an etymological, le etymological level, uh, for use perhaps confusing students that try might be the word three and the word tribute. It's not, it's just on this particular assignment. I do explain etymology a lot to my students. That is something I would explain to them because I think it's important for them to know that. So uh, moving on, uh, what I did was I ended up coming back from St. Louis and I said, what would one of my students who needs a little more scaffolding, a little more structure, what would he need to, to guide him or her through creating one of these three section pages that's a tribute? And so we designed a worksheet. Here it is. Um, it's found at the online lesson. You can uh, take a look at it, but it provides ideas for positive sounding words that you might base. Um, your descriptions on in the T, the R, and the I area, but it also gives you an permission to come up with your own word. And then it gives you space to not only start planning out what you might write, but also planning out what your page might look like. So there is a worksheet that goes along with this. Again, it's the three section idea. Um, here's a page I did using the worksheet. Uh, this is a tribute to Dred Scott. Um, right by the St. Louis Arch was the very courtroom where Dred Scott, um, uh, his, his, his judicial journey, I suppose, began and I got to be in that courtroom for alone for quite a while. Just me and the room and it was nice and I decided to make a tribute page to Dred Scott while I was in uh, Missouri as well. And uh, I came up, I used from the worksheet the word tenacious and respected, but then I decided the word impetus was a word I just liked associating with him and his story. And so it became my eye, but this is one inspired by the worksheet. Here is one not inspired by the worksheet. I just came up with the three words for a tribute to a tornado on my own. Tronado, which is Spanish for thunder. I was really fascinated with what the book said that I'd read about tornadoes, about radar and how it was used to measure speeds and directions. And then I was curious why the middle of the United States was where most tornadoes uh, uh, happen. And so I studied it from the meteorological level and I came up with some information that I can now explain to people why that area is more uh, prone to tornadoes than others. But tributes, tributes to hear things that are would be writing across the curriculum topics. And please note, these don't have to go in the writer's notebook. I put my examples in the writer's notebook because that's where I encourage my students to use models like these. These could be standalone assignments. And I'm sure most of you teachers who are good adapters who are looking at these would say, you know, you're right. I wouldn't put this in a notebook. I'd put it on a big poster that the students would display. That's certainly a valid use of this tribute idea. So whether you build a tribute page that has three sections, and again, your mastery learners, your logical thinkers, sometimes they like to know where and when a page starts and stops and exactly how much to put in a section until it's considered done. Here are some, here are some formats to help those students with creating tribute pages, but you may have students who don't need format. And that's really the trick of being a good writing instructor is to know that one tool doesn't work for everyone. You'll have very creative writers who that worksheet would probably squelch who their ideas would not be nearly as thoughtful as they would if you gave them a little bit more freedom. And so somewhere in your writing instruction, as you think about these examples, structured tribute pages, non-structured tribute pages, how do you allow room for all of your students to succeed in those areas? It's a big discussion, but uh, we have a new lesson at our website notebook tribute pages that provides all of these examples, all of these worksheets, plus some other ideas that you might be inspired to use if you brought this idea to your own classroom. We are, uh, again, the easiest way to find this lesson is to look on that left hand, if you go to CorbettHarrison.com or just Google Always Write, we should be the first hit right there on the left hand side of the menu bar. Free lessons, look for that. Lesson of the month, click on that. It'll take you to December 2017. That's where you would be looking. Let me make this a little larger just for the end statement. Hey, come to our website anytime. 
we're trying to put a whole storehouse of ideas as they come to us and as our students help us invent them uh, so that the positive feeling that we get from writing when we write with our students in our classroom can perhaps become a positive feeling if you're not feeling it in your classroom. So please come explore the website. We're glad you're here. Uh, easiest way to find it, Google Corbett Harrison, Google Always Write. Um, you'll get right there and uh, you'll spend a lot of time looking at a lot of lessons and resources at this point. Uh, hope you do though. Glad to see you. Keep on writing. Thanks everyone. Bye.